Hey, what's up? It's Connor. Final Cut Pro is finally here on the iPad, and I feel like this is something that we never thought was gonna come, but it finally happened, so let's check it out. So I've been using Final Cut Pro on the iPad for a few weeks now to really understand and take a deep dive into what it's all about. And I think the first thing I initially realized was that this is not the desktop version. You can immediately tell that Apple has completely redesigned this app from the ground up to work on the iPad, for not only being touch friendly, but for actually being touch first or Apple Pencil only. Now you can pair it with a keyboard and mouse and it's still a very good experience. Having the iPad pair with the Magic Keyboard, for example, is of course a great combo as you get basically these same shortcuts or at least the main fundamental shortcuts that you expect over from the desktop version. And alongside those shortcuts, this is basically the exact same version of Final Cut Pro, just as powerful as the desktop counterpart with the same tools and features, but all available at the touch of a finger. Once you open up Final Final Cut Pro for the first time you get greeted with the screen that presents the payment slash subscription which of course is one of those things that a lot of people are not happy about. Personally I don't really care too much because it's only $5.99 which isn't like crazy expensive for what you get but I totally understand not being able to own your own software especially because that's what we have over on the desktop. But once you pass that page you can start and create a new project which also brings up the second major problem that a lot of people have and I share this one as well which is not being able to edit and store your footage on external drives or external SSDs. When I am editing over on the Mac I store all my footage as well as the project file on an external SSD which personally helps with file management because I know that this one hard drive is strictly meant for editing but I know a lot of others do this as well and it seems like just a smarter option as video projects can take up a lot of space and nobody wants to pay an arm and leg for Apple's internal storage so it just seems like the overall smarter option to use external storage solutions. The good thing though is that I would assume this is a software or firmware limitation so hopefully Apple can fix this and bring this into a future update. So because Final Cut Pro is touch first this snap float folio from Moth is the perfect accessory to pair with your iPad. Combining the height of a conventional stand and a slimline of a folio, Moft completely redesigns the iPad stand so that you always have a stand without the bulk. Inspired by the art of origami, the Moft folio provides three viewing positions packed into one folio. You can prompt it up to a floating mode to create a minimal iPad setup by pairing an external keyboard and mouse or using it as a companion to your Mac with sidecar or universal control. There's also a focus mode in the style of a traditional folio, great for viewing content on screen. And there's also a drawing mode to give your iPad a slight angle for a more precision and more comfortable comfortable experience when using the Apple Pencil to take notes, sketching, or drawing. This folio really does do it all with its three modes, and then it's also made out of vegan leather so that it's scratch and water resistant. If you're interested in finding out more about the Snap Float Folio for Moth, head over to the first link in the description, and huge thanks to Moth for sponsoring this video. After setting up your project, you're greeted with the main interface where you can go ahead and basically get to editing, which is basically the same as the desktop with very few limitations and also some iPad exclusive features that we'll get to in just a second. The interface itself is really intuitive and easy to use and does have that same sort of feeling as the desktop version of Final Cut, but there are a few changes to better accommodate the iPad. The main change is really the way the tools are laid out as they are all in their own menus and sub menus. So sometimes navigating to that tool that you're trying to look for can take an extra second because you're going through a couple of different menus. This definitely does make sense with being a touch first interface because you don't want a bunch of things on screen that you can accidentally hit or activate. So I would just keep in mind that the tool that you were looking for, there's a good chance it's there. You just got to go through a couple of menus and sub menus to find it. The timeline works exactly how you would expect it to quickly snappy and scrubbing through feels super smooth, especially on the iPad pros for an example, because of that ProMotion display. So it really does feel buttery smooth when scrubbing through the timeline. And in Final Cut fashion, this is the magnetic timeline, which I personally love. and I know so many others do as well. So if you're coming over from the desktop version, this feels right at home when editing. Cutting footage works exactly how you expect it to, as you can either trim your clips or use the blade tool, or you can go ahead and use the ripple effect, which can cut and delete the footage either before or after making the cut, making the process super quick and efficient. And this is where I find the Apple Pencil to be the most useful as it brings a whole new experience to video editing, and it feels a lot more personal and focused and helps you stay focused on specific clips and points throughout the timeline. Apple has also added this little jog wheel that lives on the right side of the 
screen and allows for super precise movements throughout the timeline, basically a frame by frame movement, allowing you to make those super precise cuts, especially without having to pinch and zoom constantly. And then moving up from the timeline, we have the inspector as well as the media. And these are actually switched and on opposite sides from what we're used to on the Mac version. I'm not exactly sure why they did this, but they do act the exact same. The inspector is where you make a majority of the edits such as cropping, coloring, effects, and transitions. This is where, like I mentioned before, a lot of sub menus are found. So it does take an extra second to find that tool that you may be looking for. For example, I use the Ken Burns effect a ton, which adds like a little bit of movement or a zoom in and zoom out to your clips. And to get to that effect, you have to navigate over to the transform tool, head over into the crop section, and then hit Ken Burns, and then make your adjustment. This isn't like a major issue, and I really don't think there's any other way that Apple could have done this, but I would keep in mind that this could potentially slow down your editing process. We also have the coloring tools, which are redesigned for the iPad, and it's a little bit underwhelming. Like it's an iPad, it's meant for drawing and like art, and the coloring tools, you expect it to be like a pro or a deep dive into coloring, but it's really not. It's just these basic sliders. Like I expected something like we see over in DaVinci Resolve, but we just got these basic sliders, which they, I guess they do a trick, but hopefully Apple does like a redesign to the coloring tools because I would love to see just an in-depth and pro version of color grading. But this is where one of my favorite features can actually help solve this issue. And that's being able to export your project and send it over to the Mac and continue your editing over there. Besides that, Apple did bring some pretty neat features that are iPad specific like live drawing. Live drawing allows you to draw directly onto your clips and it also automatically can animate the drawing or the text, which is not only super cool because it really shows off the power of the M series of chips in these iPads, but it's also a feature that just works so efficiently and seamlessly being able to use the Apple Pencil to come in and mark up your screen, whether it's for words or animations or drawing, is extremely cool and a great way to utilize the Apple Pencil, as it's also just a much faster and easier process than what we find over on the Mac. There's also the scene removal mask, which can instantly isolate your subject from the background, all without using a green screen. The best way to utilize this and get the full effect is to take a couple of seconds with nothing in frame and just your background, and then come into frame and do your take. I did want to quickly mention though that this feature has been brought over to the Mac. So just like on the iPad, on the Mac, it's just one click and you can completely remove your background from your subject. We also have a few other things such as new titles, backgrounds, effects, and music tracks. But what's really cool about the music tracks is that it doesn't matter if your clip is like 10 seconds or 10 minutes, they can like automatically adjust itself to fit the clip appropriately. These are some pretty cool features, but I can definitely see them coming over to the Mac pretty soon. Lastly, we can also shoot video right into your project with the iPad camera. You can shoot your video directly from that iPad camera and place it right into your timeline with ease. Personally, this isn't something that I'll be using too much, but I do have to say the way the camera app works within Final Cut Pro is really cool as you're able to make adjustments to overall image. And I really hope that this is something that comes over to the iPhone eventually so that you can have a better control over your camera as well as just how it looks overall. So after using Final Cut Pro on the iPad, it's pretty clear that this is not the desktop version and it's also not going to replace the desktop version on the Mac. Final Cut for iPad basically stays in line with what the iPad is all about, which is just a different or alternative way of getting things done. And I think the real value within Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad though, is the fact that we now have one device that can literally do it all. Like you can shoot your video, edit your video, and post or publish that video all within one device. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of Final Cut Pro coming to the iPad and if it's something that you will utilize. I'm really interested in what you guys have to say. And of course, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a like and share it to a friend. And if you like Apple tech or desk setup related content, make sure to subscribe. And until next time, peace.